RX Tyron Auto Guest Hotline and bring in Courtney Cronin. She is at Courtney or Cronin on X. Make sure you follow her. For Bears News, Saul's training camp and all season long, read her stuff at ESPN.com. She joins us now on ESPN Chicago. Hey, Courtney, how are you? I'm great, guys. How are you doing? We're doing well. Uh, excellent, what, excellent. Were you guys all pretty much anticipating the, the announcement of yesterday? Most of the starters not going to play. Uh, you think that's the prudent choice here for the Bears at this point? Yeah, I'm not surprised by it. And just, you know, hearing it in hard knocks last night, too, when, when Matt Eberflus let him play through the first half and then pulled him at the end, saying that was their last series. 43 snaps in the preseason, they've seen enough. And I think that's a, I think that's a fair choice because that was the range-ish. Like they said, 45 to 55 earlier in training camp. Those were the numbers that they were targeting for Caleb in the preseason, and, and he got right there. So you saw a lot from him in, in the preseason, the in and out of structure, how he was able to perform there, operating in and out of the huddle. I mean, even – Again, last night, watching how he navigated the headset going out at Soldier Field a couple of times with the headset communication between himself and, and Shane Waldron not being completely seamless and having to work around that. So I, I think that there's a lot of, you know, as we get like into the what do you want to watch for part of uh, Thursday night, uh, mm. the game in Kansas City, there are a lot of position battles, I think, that, you know, further down the depth chart, but ones that still carry some intrigue into this game and what this roster is going to look like come Tuesday when they put the initial 53 out. But, you know, majority of starters, I think truly means majority of starters as in, I don't know which starters are going to end up playing in this game on offense, uh, considering Caleb Williams will not be in there. All right. I've got some questions about uh, that, that what that 53 is going to look like next Tuesday, but first, which starters do you expect to play tomorrow night? Maybe on the defensive side of the ball. Like, I know that he said majority of starters. The only guys I could think that would make sense just to get a couple of reps are the ones who have been injured. And my mind goes immediately to Jaquan Brisker. We saw him back out there today. He was a full participant. Yes, they were in shells, but he went through the whole practice. He was out there yesterday, too, which was where they got most of their work in. Uh, for this week, uh, like a heavy amount. Um, and it was a, it was a pretty physical practice as, as evidenced by the uh, chippiness at the end. Mm-hmm. But that's about the only guy I can think of, you know, that would, that would probably be out there for, you know, can, that would fall in that category of starters. Cause some, if everybody's asked, well, what about Nate Davis? You know, he right. played in one preseason game. He played the first half. I don't know if I can envision an offense like you sit all the other offensive linemen that are starters because they've played, you know, the same amount of reps with Caleb Williams, but you're then going to play the right guard who has had injuries. Like you want to risk that? That doesn't make Mm. logical sense to me if that was the case. So I think majority means most, you know, 95 to 90 percent of the uh, 22 starters that they have will not be playing. Is Ryan Bates getting close? Saw him on a bike again today. I know that Matt Eberflus called him week to week, and it, that's interesting because we, you know, right after the Buffalo game, it wasn't classified as something that was serious or something that would take him out for a while. But, you know, it's I, I don't want to call it worrisome by any stretch because we really don't know what it is. Like, I mean, this is the time of the preseason where they don't have to disclose what the injury is. But, you know, the fact of the matter is he hasn't been out there since you know before in practice since the buffalo before the buffalo game so i'm keep an eye on it i don't know if he's close because we've seen him out there doing the same thing every day on the bike have not seen him get back into even individual drills but as of now the offensive line that they're going in with has coleman shelton starting at center and, and maybe there's time uh there's still two weeks till the season starts but there's only a couple of days of camp left before they make the roster cuts uh, to to you know from ninety to fifty three. So we'll see if when if and when he gets back out there. If it's in the next couple of days, or if they wait and they want to bring him along going into week one. What's my guy Brisker look like coming back early on? He, I mean, he was he was pretty loud today. Um, mm-hmm. There was a there was a pass that was in uh, seven on seven that he uh, very loudly let Roma Dunze know he was not going to catch in the back of the end zone and. You know, for him to be able to get back out there after, you know, two and a half, almost three weeks on ice, like he had been ramping up. I remember seeing him at Buffalo. He was doing a pretty extensive 
extended rehab session on the field. He's been running a lot, but he was in there throughout everything today. And it was about an hour and a half, a lighter practice for them, but good stamina wise for him to be in there getting all the ones reps because they had been bringing him along with that throughout the week. He didn't get all of the reps the other day, but uh, you know, it was, was certainly getting closer than he had been in recent weeks. After seeing the pursuit of Judon on hard knocks yesterday, Will it be all quiet on the Western front for the Chicago Bears as they move forward since they missed out on the guy they wanted? Well, there's not that big name out there, right? Like the name that makes you think, okay, they're going to be in on another potential trade. I, you know, there's free agents out there. Of course, Unique Ngakwe's name always tends to surface, even if, you know, it's been surfacing for a while and they haven't come to an agreement to bring him in. Keep an eye on cuts. I, like the thing is, if you're bringing it, if you're inquiring about a Matthew Judon, this is not obviously depth. You're you're saying in the action of a of trying to acquire another team's player for a third round pick that you need to upgrade the starter opposite Montez Sweat. So that's Demarcus Walker right now. They're not trying to bring somebody in solely to be part of the pass rush rotation as depth. Like they're looking for another starter. I don't know if you're going to find one on somebody else's cuts. Usually that's a position like many. Uh, you're not going to get rid of a good player, even for a cap casualty. I think that would have already have happened by now. But if they don't make any sort of addition there, there's still the trade deadline in a couple of months mm. that I imagine we'll see Ryan Pohl be very active at again, considering that has been where he's been able to find talent the last couple of years, dating back to last November when he got Montez Sweat in the yeah, building. The cap space is important. Courtney Cronin's our guest. Carmen and York on ESPN 1000 and the ESPN Chicago app. Speaking of cuts next week, uh, I, I don't think Valus Jones is going to be on this team. What do you think? I have him on my roster, Carmen. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's a miracle. It's, I mean, it's I've had him on my roster, though, the entire time. Yeah. And I don't – personally, I don't think a full-time move to tailback mm -hmm. is going to happen. I think he's still their gadget guy. Somebody, I mean, look at how loaded that running back room is. Because, yeah. you know, the question going into camp is, is Khalil Herbert going to stick on this roster? He's going into year four. He wasn't drafted by the team. He's coming off the ankle injury, and he never really had that same burst since week five last year, even upon returning from that Washington injury. But, I can, you know, the injuries to Roshan Johnson, that's kept him in and out. He was back today, uh, by the way. But I don't. It, be, where are you putting Velas on the running back depth chart to like make him a full time running back? I don't know. With you've got DeAndre Swift, Nowhere. Khalil Herbert, and Roshan Johnson, I don't see that happening. So I I have him on there as like the fifth receiver, and fifth they'll receiver. play him at it, fifth receiver. Play him at running back. So I don't I don't see how you're going to reclassify him as a running back. I don't when think so. I don't think they will. That that, that makes sense to me. Yeah. What I a, don't see him off the roster just yet. I really don't. I think that there's been too many opportunities given. And I mean, uh, what he gives you on kick return, Nothing. you know, that, well, I mean, they seem to think he's an explosive enough kick returner that he's gotten a lot of reps back there with the one. So we'll see. Could they potentially keep four tight ends and cut blossom game loose? I don't think so. I was checking in on that actually this morning and the vibe that I get with, with fullback. Yes, I know. Shane Waldron's offenses in Seattle never had one. They utilized an extra tight extra end. Tight end yeah. it, you know, with the, with the, the blocking capabilities, you can line him up in the slot. You can put him in the backfield. He's a reliable four phase special teams guy. I don't see him off the roster. I would give that at like a 5% chance that okay. he doesn't make it. Okay. Um, and, he's, and he's a culture guy too. I know that that you know, seems like lower down the list of priorities, but he's been around this team since the beginning of this rebuild. They, they value his input, um, it, you know, on the roster and they value him in the locker room. And I think for it, you know, if you're keeping your third tight end as a 40 year old tight end in Mercedes Lewis, who, you know, again, not showing any signs of slowing down, but I think you need to have somebody else in blazing game who can block and do a lot of the dirty work that typically in these off in this offense goes to a tight end. You know, it's, it doesn't hurt to have to give that position. You know, one of the fifty-three to your fullback who's been nothing but reliable for them. Is it just me or does Cole Komet look faster? It's interesting. I don't know if I've thought of him as such because I honestly look at the addition of Gerald Everett 
and the in what that's done for Cole, allowing him to, you know, go back to the position he was playing, you know, a couple of years ago. I think having a move tight end that's basically what your fourth, fifth receiver in Gerald Everett. And I know he had missed some time in training camp, but we've seen how much they have utilized him, mm-hmm. whether it's the targets that, you know, weren't completed, weren't completions in the preseason game, but they still went his way. And we've right. seen it a lot in training camp. We saw it on the fourth and one uh, near the goal line yesterday. There's, there's quite a bit of a, there's a big role, I think, for Gerald Everett. I'm not saying that that's going to like absorb Cole Komet's role in there, but I think Cole in a blocking capacity, but also what we saw in that 26 yarder, he did look fast there. And I know yeah. the play that Matt Eberflus yeah. broke down um, in the, in his office yesterday on hard knocks with Caleb Williams, he looked fast as hell there because yeah. the way that he was able to get out on his route, we just haven't seen a whole lot of that in training camp just in terms of like that specific play, but he's always been, you know, an athlete. So I I think they've shown you the capabilities of the tight end group in this offense and just how often you're going to see two of them on the field at the same time, Mm -hmm. meaning a lot of run for your Cole Komet and a lot of run for Gerald Everett. Yeah. All right. Anything else we should know ahead of uh, tomorrow and cuts next Tuesday. So the thing that I'm going to watch for tomorrow, and I know this is really in the weeds, and I and I hope somebody along with me is watching in the fourth quarter when it's like all of the backups in the game. So today, Keenan Allen was out, and Dante Pettis was out too. So Pettis had the big game, you know, with the twos, with uh, Tyson Bajant, caught two touchdowns. You know, it's not a foregone conclusion, in my opinion, that he's, you know, a lock for this roster as a sixth receiver. Right now, I have him there. Mm-hmm. But he was hurt today. He was on the bike. I mean, he wasn't out there. Maybe it's a precautionary thing, but remember, this is a guy who's had some hamstring issues in years past. DeAndre Carter was out there getting some work in with the ones. And that's again, that's you know Pettis being out, but that's also Keenan Allen being out today too. So keep an eye on DeAndre Carter. That's a name that like, depending upon what happens in tomorrow's game, I may end up putting on as the sixth receiver guy has a great story. I mean, he's been in the league for six, seven years for him to stick on this roster. He could potentially be the punt returner day one. Um, that's, that's a name that I'm looking at too. And, you know, do they keep five safeties? Do they keep four? I know we're getting in the weeds on this, but uh, Adrian Colbert versus Tavarius Moore position battle. We're all excited about tomorrow night in Kansas city. That is uh that's what I will be looking at. All right. Sounds good, Courtney. Thanks for the update, safe travels. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. So yeah, there's Courtney Cronin at Courtney R. Cronin on X. We'll do the lunch rush coming.